We now like to analyze what happens when we put a capacitor into a circuit. So we have a C to the MF, and we have a resistor, and now we have a capacitor in the circuit, and let's put a switch here in this circuit, S. Now, when we close S, then um, what happens is the battery starts to put out a current, and we're going to see that this current that runs through this circuit will be a function of time. And what is the role of capacitors in circuits? Well, there's many, many different uses of capacitors. One of the simplest ways to think of a capacitor, it's like a battery. As the capacitor starts to charge up, it develops a potential difference, and there's an electric field in the capacitor storing energy. So our capacitor acts like a battery that we can place in circuits if we want to keep a potential a voltage at a certain level, or if we want to generate a little current from that stored energy. Many, many uses for capacitors in circuits. So what we want to do now is think about how to analyze capacitors. Now, to do that, we've already shown that in the beginnings of our analysis, we have our two choices, the direction of current and a circulation direction. And we're going to apply the same principle delta vi around a closed path is zero, and now what we have to do is think about the capacitor. So our new choice is to decide which plate, now remember, capacitors can be quite complicated. The symbol is just a illustration of a parallel plate capacitor, but this doesn't have to be a parallel plate capacitor at all. It's just a symbol that we use. And our choice is to put charges plus or minus q on these plates. And so here I'll choose plus Q and minus Q. Now, those are our conventions, but we have a, some consistency condition, and let's look at that. Suppose that we have a capacitor, and this is our first case, and that we have made two choices where I is coming in, and we have plus Q and minus Q. This is what we refer to as a charging capacitor. Capacitance C. Now, um, the charge on the plate, remember current, let's just think about it as the flow of positive charges. The charge on the plate is increasing, and so what we have here for our convention, when a capacitor is charging, the current is plus dq dt. And let's call this um, our convention 3A. Now, our next convention is what would happen if the capacitor were discharging? So here's our capacitor. We have our conventions, I plus Q and minus Q. This is what we call discharging. And sometimes in our circuits, we won't know whether the capacitor is charging or discharging. And when we look at this case, again, think of positive charges flowing away. We see that the positive charge in the plate is decreasing. And so that I, in this case, is minus dq dt. Notice the difference in signs. That's a consistency condition with what we called positive current. So that's our first convention between our choices of current and charge. And the last conventions we have is our circulation direction and the potential difference across the capacitor. Now, recall that the capacitor is acting like a battery, so you can use the same ideas as we did with the CDA of MEF. This conventions will not depend on the current. It just depends on how we chose plus Q and minus Q. And let's write those up like this. So if we have our capacitor and we have our choices of plus Q and minus Q, and we're circulating from the positive plate, which is at a higher voltage, then the lower plate, which is a lower voltage. This is the before. This is the after, as defined by the circulation direction. Then our delta V is going from positive to negative, just like we have with the battery. It's minus Q over C. And finally, for B, if we have 
our capacitor and we want to circulate from the, let's draw our capacitor and we have plus Q and minus Q and now we're circulating from the negative plate to the positive plate then just like a battery when we go from the lower to the higher from the before to the after we get plus Q over C. And these are the tools that we need now to analyze our capacitor. In the same way that we reduced networks with resistors that were connected in series and parallel, we now would like to consider a network with two capacitors. So here's a C to the MF. Here's one capacitor, C1. And here's another capacitor, C2. And these capacitors are connected in parallel. And we'd like to see what type of equivalent capacitance we get. So what we'd like to do is reduce this network to one equivalent capacitor with an EMF. Now, in our equivalent capacitance, we're going to say we have plus Q and minus Q. And we know that the equivalence capacitance here, um, we can write it in this way, we can write that the charge Q is equal to the equivalent capacitance times the EMF. Now, how do we think about this circuit? Well, we know as these capacitors are charging up that we could think of, we might first start to think about currents flowing in each branch. And what that means is that different charges will appear across each of these capacitors. So let's write plus Q1 and minus Q1 and plus Q2 and minus Q2. Now, the reason these charges are not equal is the capacitance is not equal, but the potential is the same. Always thinking about Q as C delta V, easy to forget that. And so the potential is the same, but the capacitance is different and so the charges will be different. Now, just like with resistors, we now want to ask the question, what quantities add? We see that the potential across these two capacitors is the same, but what adds here is the total charge. What we refer to Q is the total charge stored in the system, and so what adds is total charge. Q equals Q1 plus Q2. Now, in some ways, that's no surprise because if we differentiated this equation, we would have, if you took derivatives, I equals I1 plus I2, and you recognize that as current conservation. So it's fundamentally the same idea. Now, let's look at what we have. We know that the, the total charge is related to the equivalent capacitance times this potential difference, which is our C to the EMF. Q1 is equal to C1 times the same potential difference, they're connected in parallel. C2 times the same potential difference. So we see that when you connect capacitors in parallel, that capacitance adds, that's opposite the case of resistors. Why is that true? That's a formula that people tend to memorize, but what's much more important to realize is this just a manifestation of current conservation, it's charge that's conserved. The charge that ultimately flows into this system is deposited on those two plates, and so capacitance and parallel add because of charge conservation. Now let's look at what happens when we connect two capacitors in series. So suppose we have one capacitor, C1, we have another capacitor, C2, a seat, an ideal seat of EMF, and now we're connecting capacitors in series. And what we want to do is reduce this to some type of equivalent capacitance. And on our equivalent capacitor, we have a certain charge plus Q and minus Q, and we have an EMF, and we want a current I going in this circuit. Now, just to remind us that it looks like a gap. There's inside the capacitor, we have um, the idea is that charges are going to move 
if I put a positive plate here and a negative plate there, what that means is, let's just do this in order. Charges are moving everywhere in the circuit, but let's imagine first that negative electrons leave this plate, go through the battery, and get deposited on that one. So plus Q and minus Q, but all of this is happening simultaneously, relatively up to the speed of light in which electric fields propagate. Now, if there's a minus charge in here, this is a conducting path with one plate, a conducting wire, and another plate. What will happen is positive charges will, or again, electrons will leave this plate due to that negative charge and move to this plate until you get a minus Q there, leaving a residual plus Q there. Charge conservation, if this was uncharged initially, minus Q plus Q on that conductor is zero. And so this is what happens to capacitors in series. It's not Q1 minus Q1, Q2 minus Q2, if this were uncharged initially, plus Q minus Q plus Q minus Q. That's the important thing to realize. And once again now, over here, we see that um, what we have is that our EMF is Q over C equivalent. And what adds now, once again, when you have elements connected in series, it's potential that adds. So what we have is the electric potential difference due to the EMF is equal to delta V1 plus delta V2. That's just Kirchhoff's law. And now what do we have for our battery for the equivalent circuit? That's Q over C equivalent. And now, what is the potential across a capacitor? Remember, delta V, Q over C. And so we have the same Q over C1 plus the same Q over C2. And so when we have capacitors in series, they add inversely. That's our series adding capacitors in series. And again, why is this true? It's because the potential is adding in series.